Hey y'all, I'm Paula Dean, and happy Thanksgiving to you and yours. You know, today I'm adding a twist to the traditional holiday menu, complete with all the fixings for a wonderful family dinner. And lucky for me, it looks like my boys, Jamie and Bobby, are gonna give their mama a hand in the kitchen today. And we have a lot to cook, so let's get started. Instead of the usual Thanksgiving turkey, today we're gonna be roasting a favorite in our house, a honey glazed game hen, sweet and savory. And then my boys are gonna be fixing up the sides. One's gonna be fixing oven roasted red potatoes with rosemary and garlic, and the other one is gonna be fixing up a southern favorite, fried green bean bundles. And what Thanksgiving dinner would be complete without a cranberry sauce? And this recipe is just destined to be one that you'll make for years to come. And then to satisfy everyone's sweet tooth, especially Michael's, you don't want to miss my pumpkin gingerbread trifle for dessert. So loosen up your belt buckles and join me in the kitchen, cause this is one feast you don't want to miss. It's Thanksgiving day. And do you guys know what I would rather be doing than cooking in the rain? No, what? Nothing. It's really I, nice, isn't it? I love to cook in the rain. In fact, I could do a whole week's worth of cooking if, if it rains on me. Over here, Bobby is gonna be making garlic and rosemary oven roasted potatoes. Jamie's working on my marinade for the honey game hens. No, Mama, I like the idea of the Cornish hens because, you know, we eat lots of turkey anyway. That's, yeah. not, that's not just a Thanksgiving yeah. Day thing for us. Yeah. So I like the idea. To me, the greatest part about it is nobody's fighting for their favorite piece. Right. All right, Jamie, what are you doing with that spoon? It's just as easy to uh -huh. use a spoon as a peeler. It's Can just I that try easy. That? Give it a try. I would never have thought to use a spoon on ginger, that's great. That's it's simple. That's easier than that potato yep. peeler. And Bobby, how are you coming, son? I'm just getting these ready to season with a little olive uh -huh. oil, a little salt, pepper, a little rosemary, fresh garlic. Show me what you're gonna right. do. I'm gonna take the olive oil, that's uh, uh -huh. roughly a cup of olive oil. I'm gonna add a little bit of it. Yeah. <laughs> Did I spill something? Like son, like mama. You know. <laughs> okay, well, I think I would like some kosher salt, I like the. I do too, I love mm. that bit, it's so flavorful. Yeah, and some fresh black pepper. Mm -hmm. And I would just toss those in that oil like that. Oh, oh, yeah. I forgot the garlic, Mom. Okay, yeah, throw in the garlic. Put it all in, son. Okay. All right, now, how about stripping some of your rosemary? Oh yeah, the and rosemary, put it in I almost there. forgot. Yeah. If I can do it without getting all the biggest limbs in there. Oh, that's great. We're, you know, so lucky that we can grow this stuff practically year round, have all these fresh we ingredients. We certainly can. So that finishes your dish, doesn't it? it? It takes so long to prepare it and so quick to eat it. This is really where you have a chance to visit and That's right. talk about things. Because this is the long part of it. You know, you That's spend a... hours and 10 minutes everybody's done, especially Thanksgiving. Football's on, it's time for a nap. So this is really nice for us to get to spend that's, this time that's together. That's a great point, Jamie. Yep. All right, so let's get that marinade going because the potatoes are done, so well, let's get to cracking. This is simple. Okay. This is just going to be a half a cup of honey. I've got a half a cup of soy sauce. About two tablespoons of this oil. What kind of oil are you using? I'm just using the vegetable oil, okay. just, just the standard. And this is our, our ginger and garlic that, that I got together a little bit earlier. Smells great. Mm -hmm. It's good. And about two tablespoons of fresh orange juice. All right, do you put zest in that yeah. or are you just using the... No, I'm gonna put a little bit of zest. No matter where you get the juice from, nothing gives you the flavor of a fresh orange like the tiniest amount of zest. You'd think an orange and soy sauce would be the last two things that you put together, but, well, we're almost there now, you can taste it. Get the flavors mixed up together good. That is Good, so huh? on the money. Yeah. Michael's going to love it because, you know, he's got a sweet tooth like this big. <laughs> Here you go. Thank you. I'm just going to pour that over it and in it. And... All right, now we're going to let this just sit in the refrigerator and marinate. And I'll go to the fridge and I'll twist them and turn them. 
because I want to make sure that marinade gets in them in every crevice. How long did you marinate those for? Well, I would marinate them for about an hour. If you'll put this one in the refrigerator, I've got another pan ready too. Son, can I get over here and wash my hands, sure. please? It's just very, very important that you don't cross-contaminate, especially after handling poultry. All right, so we've got these hens ready. We're gonna put them in a 350 preheated degree oven. We got that on 350, Bobby? Yes, ma'am. And we're gonna bake these for one hour so you can see how short your time is compared to a big old turkey. All right, so we're gonna just transfer them over in here. And you'll notice that I had these sitting on the counter. I've taken them to room temperature because they will cook better if they don't have to start out ice cold. And we're just gonna pour the marinade on top of them and we're gonna baste them. We're gonna go to our oven every 15 minutes and baste them, cooking them for one hour. All right, son, if you'd get that door open for me. This pan, I'm using a cast iron pan and it's real, real heavy. Gertie's not gonna miss the dinner bell. Gertie's not moving. All right, guys, we've got a Cornish hens and our new potatoes in the oven. We really need to take a quick break and kind of get set up for the next dishes, which is gonna be fried green bean bundles and gingerbread trifle. Plus, we're gonna taste this stuff. So you hear somebody say trifle? <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah. Isn't, he, isn't he funny? He's funny. He's so funny, isn't he? Right, guys, this should be ready. You want um, some help with that, Mom? I, I tell you what, that cast iron pan is heavy, Jamie. If you, you. you see, no, it is heavy. It's heavy as lead. Gosh, it smells so good. Yeah. All right, and how about Bobby's potatoes? You want to get those mm -hmm. out? Who I did good? They're perfectly done. Bobby, you want to grab the platter and we'll taste. Yeah, that oh, sounds. Like, <laughs> that sounds like a good idea. They are beautiful, aren't they? Turn out yeah. good. All right, Jamie, look over there on the stove. I've cooked some wild rice, and I'm just gonna dump this rice on the platter. Mm-hmm. Oh, doesn't that look awesome? out of this world? Look what a beautiful platter that makes. Mm -hmm. Where do you wanna plant these birds, Mama? Y'all are dying for a taste, aren't you? Yeah, we're going Well, let's see if, wait, look. He looks like he's missing a leg anyway because he's buried down that rice. Want your kitchen chairs? No. You don't want to taste? I do want to taste. Mmm. Is it good? You look like it. It is so good. Mmm. Mmm. The honey. Oh, good grill. Mmm. Mm. It's so mm. it's so tender and juicy. Jamie, try the potatoes. Let me have one. All right, you can't leave that on the platter, son, or <laughs> mm. Paul Paul no we've <laughs> Bobby, the potatoes are good. Very you want to put this on the table, son, sure. and get it ready? Sure. And the potatoes, you can come back for those. In the meantime, Jamie and I are going to start <laughs> dropping these green bean bundles because uh -huh. we want this to be the last thing. Mm. All right, now, Jamie, mm. I want to show you how I do these. Show me how you do it, Mama. Okay, I've got flour here. I'm going to put just some house seasoning in that flour. Now, we're going to pour our buttermilk in here. And I have green onion, but I have blanched it to make it flexible. So yeah. all you have to do is gather you up about five green beans. Are your hands too big? A little bit. And I'll tell you another trick. If you don't like green beans, asparagus bundles are delicious yeah. too, deep fried. And all you have to do is give somebody just one bundle and some roasted new potatoes and a thick char-grilled ribeye and it's a meal fit for a king. Uh, you try to give me and Bobby just one of these and see what happens. <laughs> and, Let me rinse my hands. Okay. All right, I'm gonna drop these in. What it is hot. I'm now? frying it on 350. If you wanted to put a basket in there, yeah. that would work well too, and then you could just lift them out. How long are you cooking these? Just long enough to roll them around just, for a yeah, few minutes? Yeah, just a light brown. 
and you really want to make sure that your grease is not too hot. You want me to take these to the table? Yeah, you can go ahead and start bowling those up. You can trust me not to eat them until mm -hmm. y'all are ready. <laughs> and I'm going to help you make the sauce. Oh, great. All right, let's get a pot. There's one. It's still a little warm, but if you want to pour that in the pot. Yeah, I can handle and I'm going to take some chicken stock. And, and I'm just going to mix a little of that chicken stock into our cornstarch. We're going to let this come to a bowl. And let's add a little chicken stock. And let's go ahead and stir this in. You do this last thing, like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you got to food's wait. already prepared. You make well, this you, very last. Yeah, because you got to wait until your birds are done so you can pour all your stock off your birds. Let's change spoons, son. Let's go with our wooden spoon. All right. All right, now you stir while I pour in our thickening. The ball has left us, mm -hmm. but you got to bring this back to a ball if you want it to thicken on you, mm -hmm. so. Oh, it smells great. Mm-hmm, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Let's see, we may even have a whisk. Change to that whisk and right. kind of do it like that. And got it. That'll break up any lumps in it that it. the cornstarch might have caused you. Yeah, and see, this won't be like a regular gravy. This will be more like a sauce. So I'm going to add, before we take it to the table, though, I'm just going to add a pinch of house seasoning to it. Okay. Next, I'm going to be whipping up that gingerbread trifle and one more extra surprise, Ms. Hoggle's cream cheese stuffed cranberry sauce. So I'll see y'all in a couple of minutes. Every Thanksgiving, I try to give y'all something that's really gonna give your meal a pop, that's easy and simple and economical. Well, I've got one for y'all, and I have to thank a friend for this recipe, Judy Hoggle's mother's cranberry sauce recipe. All right, now I'm gonna cut this into about 10 slices, and it's easier for me if I start in the middle and then go from there. All right. Now, all we're going to do at this point is take some softened cream cheese and some mayonnaise. Two of my favorite condiments. And we're going to mix those together. And we're going to add, oh gosh, anywhere from a fourth to a half a cup of pecans. And I like it really nutty, so I'm going with a half a cup. All right, and to put this together, we're just gonna put our cranberry sauce on the plate, and then we're gonna make a sandwich using that cream cheese filling. Put another piece on top of it, just like that. I really hope that y'all will have this on your Thanksgiving table this year, because you're not gonna believe how easy and delicious it is. And you could take the time to garnish it with a little parsley. Thank you, Judy, for another cranberry sauce winner. You're gonna love it. All right, speaking of loving, I got to get on with Michael's favorite part of the meal, which is dessert. This Thanksgiving, I'm gonna do a gingerbread pumpkin trifle. So we're just gonna stir our vanilla pudding into our pumpkin pie filling. And a half a cup of packed brown sugar. All right, I'm putting a teaspoon of cardamom in it, or you could use cinnamon. We're just gonna mix that together. A lot of people think that they can't have Thanksgiving without pumpkin pie. But to me, I find it just a little on the boring side. So I always try to find a dessert that's got pumpkin in it, but has a little more punch and excitement. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut our gingerbread in half because I'm gonna make two layers, and I'm gonna use half of our ingredients for each layer. And you'll wanna make sure that you have a pretty bowl to put your trifle in so you can see all your layers. And I'm gonna leave mine in pretty big chunks. 
All right, now our next layer, we're gonna take half of our pumpkin. In Savannah, we are big on trifles. We, we just love all that gooey stuff all piled up in our, in our dishes. Mmm, there's just nothing like whipped cream. So you can see our bowl is filling up quickly. All right. So here we go again with the other half of our gingerbread. And we're gonna finish putting our pumpkin over that gingerbread. You know, Thanksgiving is such traditional food. It's nice to just stay very, very close to those traditional foods, but just shake them up a little bit. And this is one of those recipes that will shake up pumpkin just a little bit. Yep, we've got a nice little shake up and y'all can see how easy it was to do. We didn't fight a turkey, a great big old turkey and have any of those worries. We didn't have to make pie crust and hope that they turned out right. And we didn't have to make fresh cranberry sauce. But yet, yeah, this is a very special meal that took very, very little effort. And I can't tell you how much I enjoyed being in the kitchen with my kids because they, they were not on a schedule. They didn't have to go to the restaurant. They didn't have to play golf. You know, I had their full attention here in the kitchen. All right, now I'm just gonna spread ginger snaps that I've crushed on top. What a great dessert. Yum. <laughs> you ready? Yeah, I wanna taste it. Before I get it to the table? Sure. All right, well let me do it, cause I know how to I know how to dig so you can't tell somebody's been in it. I've had a lot of practice. <laughs> Is that too big? Mm-mm. Do you like it better than the pumpkin gooey butter cake? I do. It's delicious. I'd say that's a yes, y'all. How about the cranberry sauce, Michael? You get it. You <laughs> y'all hear what he said to me? He said, you get it. I think all he wants is a trifle. <laughs> That's all right, I want the cranberry sauce. Y'all stick around, cause next I'm gonna give you a few tips on extending the life of your herbs. For a couple of minutes, I would just like to talk about herbs. They add such great flavors to so many different foods. And here I've got parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. Not only was it a great song, it's great, great flavors to your food. You'll want to remember that when you're using a dry herb, they're much stronger than your fresh. So you'll want to use not quite as much. I want to show y'all just a few ways to really give extra life. What are you doing, I son? need this for the table. <laughs> okay. It's time to eat. Come on. <laughs> okay. I'm hurrying. I want to share with y'all a few ways that you can really make the most of your herb garden. If you're one of those people that like to use dried herbs, make sure that you dispose of them after six months because more than likely they've lost most of their flavor. If you're growing fresh herbs, you can dry these for the winter by hanging them upside down, then stripping the leaves and storing those also in a cool, dark place. But if you have fresh parsley, put it in a glass of water, stick it in the fridge, and it's just like a flower. It'll last for a lot longer. And your thyme and your rosemary and your sage, you can wrap it in a damp paper towel, put it into a seal-proof bag, and you'll find that you've got flavors that'll last you a little bit longer. Mmm. Come on, Mom, it's time to eat. Oh, okay, I'm Everybody's coming. Everybody's waiting. Okay, I'm coming. Well, it's finally time to eat this fabulous Thanksgiving meal. And I've got some of my family gathered here with me. It's wonderful sharing a meal with Jamie and Bobby and Michael and those honey game hens. Michael can hardly keep his eyes off of them. 
these roasted red potatoes with rosemary and garlic and the green bean bundles. And don't forget Miss Hoggle's cranberry sauce and the pumpkin gingerbread trifle. Doesn't it look good, y'all? <laughs> we try to live every day like it's Thanksgiving because my family and I have so much to be thankful for. So the Dean Groover family would love to send to y'all best dishes, hugs and kisses from our Thanksgiving table to yours. Cheers. Uh, cheers. Happy Thanksgiving.